Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Lou Wolfenstein, and I'm the managing principal of the investment advisor. Um, what we've done this evening is gone ahead and put together a presentation which will be handled by Andre <coughs> Weisbrot, Quantum uh, Financial Advisors, on the 28 mistakes that can sink your retirement. We hope that this, you'll find this presentation of value. Um, this is really something that we want to do to help everyone improve their lives. And we think that this presentation will begin the process of showing you exactly how we can go about doing that. Um, we also believe in bringing you simply the best in terms of the people in the industry. Um, and we have another special guest here this evening. Um, his name is Antonio Bass with the American Funds. Um, the American Funds is one of the largest fund families in the country, one of the most successful, and have been one of the best performing fund groups, really probably pretty close to of all times, particularly when you take a look at how long they've been around. Um, and certainly you can take a look at Morningstar or any of the other services that go ahead and evaluate the funds and you will find that American Funds is among the best. Um, with that, I'd like to go ahead and introduce Antonio Bass, who is here representing the American Funds. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. So, as Lou stated, my name is Antonio Bass. I definitely uh, look forward to being here. Uh, we've been around since 1931. We have over $2 trillion in assets, and we have worked directly with financial advisors from that time frame. So, when you think about uh, American Funds as a whole, we want to make sure that you're getting the best of breed. So within the process, we have over 18 investments, and 17 out of 18 of those investments since inception has outperformed their indexes. So when you think about uh, American funds as a whole, when you think about objective-based solutions that have the capability of being low cost, and within that have a multi-manager approach that looks across and scours the entire uh, universe of uh, investments to figure out what particular companies make the most sense to be investing in in terms of your mutual fund products. Uh, so within that process, the portfolio managers are compensated on a one, three, five, and eight year basis, heavily uh, skewed towards more than five, eight year number. And what does that mean? That means that they're looking in terms of long-term view and goals, exactly like they find the clients are as well. So in and of itself, American Funds looks to provide you uh, excess return over indices over a long period of time. And we have done so since 1931, and we look to do so in the future. So hopefully uh, you enjoy 20 mistakes that you can see your retirement. I have a great fun as well. Thank you, Antonio. Of course. Uh, I have to say that I have used the American funds in portfolio allocations since the 1980s, and they are one of the best groups out there. Number one, when we want managed funds, when we're not buying individual stocks or ETFs or whatever, they're going to be one of the top fund families that we use. And I, I really appreciate what the American funds have done for my clients. So today is 28 mistakes. And let's see if I've got my notes. Here we go. I know that sounds negative. But sometimes to get a positive, you have to look at the negative, okay? You know, like the proverb says, a man's got to look where he's going. If you don't look where you're going and see what could go wrong, you just walk right into it, right? Well, I'm going to start with a trivia question. Who do you think is the greatest investor ever? Anybody got an idea? Who's the greatest investor ever? No ideas. Warren Buffett? Uh, a lot of people would say Warren Buffett. Nope, that's not it. It's Noah. Noah. Why? Because he floated stock while everything else was getting liquidated. <laughs> There was a preacher. He was praying one day. He asked God, how long is a million years to you? God said, one second. 
Then the preacher asked, God, how much is $10 million to you? And God replied, a penny. Then finally, the next day, the preacher got up his courage and asked God, God, can I have one of your pennies? And God said, just wait a second. You gotta, you gotta let that sink in. You gotta let that sink in. Here's the question: How do we want to be? Do you want to be adventurous? You want to see the world, fulfill some of your bucket list desires, uh, just enjoying family, quality time. We like the rent a kids. Grandkids are great because you can rent them and give them back. How about want to be content, peace with yourself, be able to rest for a moment? I think these are some of the things that we all desire. So for those of you that are not yet retired, I'm going to give you 16 pre-retirement mistakes to avoid. It is never too early to stop, start eating right. It's never too early to develop habits and actions that can serve a lifetime. And I'll tell you, unfortunately, today, our kids are not being educated in the practicality of life. And, and that's a problem in the educational system, but it's also a problem in the family. They're not growing up learning how the real nitty gritty of what money is, how to, you know, Everything's plastic, everything's online, and, and so a lot of times we don't touch it. And that's really important. The first and perhaps the biggest mistake is not having a plan. Failure to plan is tantamount to planning to fail. A number of people have said it in different, different ways, but that's basically the message. Um, I'm a Christian. I like the Bible. The Bible has a whole bunch of wisdom in it. You don't have to believe in God to get wisdom from the Bible. And Luke 14 says, suppose one of you wants to build a tower, won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? That is so practical. Do we teach our kids that? You know, what is it that we do when we're young that sets us up for the future? The actions to take are, first of all, analyze your cash flows honestly. Categorize them into two categories, needs and wants. It's interesting how people put wants before their needs, and then their needs cause them problems, and then they get into debt. Very classic problem. Second is create a budget that includes saving and investment. Some people have said, whatever you make, spend less. Third is engage with a financial planning expert. And they take many forms, by the way. There are certified financial planners. There are chartered financial consultants. There are people that do investments that do a fantastic job at planning. There are lawyers and accountants and all sorts of folks that can help you there. Now you want to define your goals. It really helps to ask yourself, what do you want to accomplish with your money? What do you want to accomplish with your productivity? Money isn't everything, and wealth, for wealth's sake, is a trap. Wealth is a tool, and it's to benefit you and others. So part of good planning is having good advisors. The proverb says, where there is no counsel, the people fail, or people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Again, just pure, simple wisdom. Here's your key advisors, a financial planner, an investment advisor, oftentimes these are, these are combined disciplines an accountant and a tax expert, insurance agent, often an investment planning firms also offer these, and an attorney for estates, business issues, 
and other things that affect your fire. And then if you're a business owner, especially, have, a, have an advisory board. Have somebody that you can go to, some people you can go to, to get good advice. All right, the second biggest mistake, and this particularly applies to couples, it can also be applied to businesses, especially where you have a board of directors or whatever. But the mistake is not being unified. If you're divided, what? You fall. In the Bible, it says the two become one. Actions to take. Talk about your finances openly and honestly, and don't hide things. Where I've found the problems in the past is where couples will actually hide that one, one person doesn't even know somebody's got a, got a secret stash. That's not healthy. In humility, understand yourselves and each other, your strengths, weaknesses, and most important, recognize how your different personalities, gifts, and talents can create balance versus conflict. Share responsibilities and each know the other's role. I don't know whether you know this, but the biggest cause of divorce is financial stress. Seek out counseling, relationship and financial counseling as you need it. Okay, number three is overspending. Don't have to spend a whole lot of time on that, but too many people spend money they earn to buy things they don't want to impress people that they don't like. That's what Will Rogers said. So the actions. Avoid buying too much house and too much car. Those are probably the two biggest mistakes people make. They get themselves mortgage to the hill, and they get themselves in car payments to the hill, and they exhaust financial resources. Avoid eating out and going out too much. Treat yourself every once in a while, but realize that every time you go out, you're paying four or five times what you could if you cooked it up. It's as simple as that. Avoid impulse buying. Step away from it. Think about it. Pray about it. Do whatever you need. And I love it when buying cars. I've always taught my clients, when you buy cars, you go in, you know, you've done your research, you know what you should pay for that car. You tell them what you're going to pay for that car. If they say, no, you walk out the door. If you know your stuff, you're not going to get to the door. Last time I bought a car, I did it so much that I actually told them how much profit they were going to make. The manager came to me and said they had never had anybody nail it like this, sold. I made sure they made $300, $400. But I also saved a couple thousand because I knew what it cost. And so you have to do that. So don't just impulse buy. And remember the sale price. Go to any store. I could name a store, right? They always are on sale. You know why? Because if it's 20% off, that's what the retail price should be. And unless it's 40% off, you're not really getting a deal. I can tell you that. That's the way retail works. But they understand the psychology of most people. Oh, 20% off. Wow, I better buy it. No, that's what you should have paid for it. Number four, failure to project your future independence income that you need accurately. This is, this is a tough one, and good advisors will help you walk through this. Bad math equals bad future. That's me. <laughs> Actions to take. Make a future retirement budget that fits your income sources and include inflation in your projection. Okay. You gotta understand, the long-term average of inflation is 3%. If that's the case, your cost of living doubles every 24 years. A person retiring at age 65 has a really good chance in today's world of living past 90. So if you're planning to spend $50,000 a year at your retirement, and you
you haven't included inflation, you just might as well get turned over in the spit because you're going to get cooked because if you live to 90, that 50 grand is going to be 100 grand. It's just reality, folks. And so many people don't think about that. Consult your financial planning expert to verify the projections that, are, that fit you. Because again, it's got to fit you. And be realistic. Most people are not realistic, and that's why most people can't retire comfortably today. Those are the statistics. Most people can't. Ah, oh, Tomorrowland. This is a mystical place. And it's a mystical place where and I got to read this just right. Um, let me see, where do I have it? Uh, it's a mystical place where most of human productivity, motivation, and achievement is stored. I love that. I found that somewhere. I said, oh my goodness, that is so true. <laughs> That's procrastination. So, not planning, saving, and investing soon enough earlier is better. Time is money. The actions to take, save, and invest regularly every paycheck, unless you have an emergency or something. Contribute to the following buckets. I love bucket planning. All right? And I actually create separate accounts. I, that just helps me. Not everybody wants to do it that way. You don't have to. But I actually have accounts for the next car purchase. For the, if I, I don't need a home down payment anymore, okay? Education, vacation, I mean, whatever it is, create your own buckets. Retirement plans and taxable long-term investments. With retirement plans, it's simple. I say, max the max, the match, max the match. <laughs> so if you've got a match, that's free money, okay? If you've got a 50 cents on the dollar match, I can't invest you and get you an immediate 50%. And if I promise that, I'm a charlatan. Okay? Yes, it could happen if I just have to buy the right stock or whatever at the right time. I mean, I recently, you know, two months ago, I, I, you know, I, I identified a stock that I thought was doing some, the company was doing some great things. And all of a sudden, it was up almost 12% in two months. And after I bought it, I just happened to identify it at that time. Some of it's luck, some of it's smart, some of it's just, you know, common sense, and, and, and then you have to do it enough times because you don't win every one. But you've got to get the match because that's an immediate income to you. Then once you've done the match, then you've got a lot of different options. And I love the Roth IRAs. Why? Because they're tax-free. I'd sometimes rather not have the deduction and have the future be tax-free, especially if you're starting young. If somebody's in their 20s, Go Roth. Six, not saving and investing enough. Again, the tower. Use the bucket approach, research the cost, consider inflation, choose the appropriate savings and investment vehicle, whether it's a mutual fund, such as the American funds or T. Rowe Price or anyone, there's some really good mutual funds out there that are managed. You also have stocks, you also have a new thing, relatively new thing called an exchange traded fund. And then you have individual companies that you can buy. Calculate the monthly amount you need to save and invest. Take advantage of those matching points and do it. There's nothing like discipline. We, none of us like it, but it always produces results, whether you're an athlete or whether you're an investor. Not investing wisely. An investment in knowledge pays the best interest. That was Ben Franklin. In Ecclesiastes, it says, invest in seven ventures, yes, in eight. You do not know what disaster may come upon the land. The Bible is rich. It's really rich in stuff like this. So the actions to take, consult the appropriate advisors. Invest in suitable, appropriate investments that fit your situation, goals, and temperament. In equities, and equities are like stocks, they're real estate, you know, that's what they call equity. 
Seek balance among value and income with a potential for growth. That's what I always look for. Um, and make appropriate allocation to bonds, CDs, and money markets for stability. Some people can't afford to take the full stock market risk. Okay? So you, so you want to balance your investments out to fit you and to fit your risk, risk tolerance. And then you want to diversify. But don't diversify too much. Number eight is having unrealistic expectations regarding your investment returns. And a fellow named Jacques Fresco that I don't know, I don't know much about him, but he says something really good. It's your own expectations that hurt you, not the world you live in. Whatever happens in the world is real. What you think should happen is unreal. So people are hurt by their expectations. You know, you're you're not disappointed by the world. You are disappointed by your own projections. I thought that was really profound. And John 16 says, in this world you will have trouble. So the actions, be realistic. What you have to understand is long-term, large company stocks, best case scenario over 15 to 20 years, this is the best case scenario, is going to be around 12 to 15 percent total return. That's in the best case. And, if you, and that's if you start at a market bottom. It's more like 2 to 6 percent if you start at a market top. And in some 10 years, two 10-year periods in the last since 1926, you've had a negative return. From 2008 to 2008, uh, excuse me, from, two, from 1998 to 2008, you actually had a negative return in the S&P 500. That's reality. Market indexes have no expenses. So whatever market assumptions you use decrease the expectations by 1% or more per year because of the costs of investing. It, it, the, one of the insanities is everybody looking in the newspaper wherever for whatever the S&P 500 returned. The problem is it has no expenses. <laughs> Everything, even the cheapest exchange traded funds still has expenses. Err on the side of being conservative. Nine is poor tax planning. Okay, here are some of my favorite quotes for tax planning. Winston Churchill, we contend that for a nation to try to tax itself into prosperity is like a man standing in a bucket and trying to lift himself up by the handle. You don't pay taxes, they take taxes. That's Chris Rock. The avoidance of taxes is the only intellectual pursuit that still carries any reward. That was John Keynes. <laughs> so the actions to take, consult a qualified tax advisor, <coughs> usually as a CPA, not always, but usually. Utilize tax-advantaged investments, 401k, IRA, tax-free bonds, etc. wisely. You don't want to put everything there, by the way, because if somebody put only in 401ks and IRAs, at some point in the future, they could create a higher tax bracket for themselves because they have too much that they've never paid taxes on. And believe me, the government wants their pound of flesh. Utilize all available deductions. Practice purposeful and creative charitable giving. One of my favorite things is when I have clients that have charitable hearts. And I, you know, just recently, I had a client where we had had a position that, had, that, that was up like 270%. What did we do? We gave it to their charity. Not only did they not have a capital gain to pay taxes on, they got to deduct the entire amount off their taxes, and it was for a great cause. It's so powerful. And many people miss it and forget to do it. If you are a business owner, coordinate business and personal planning. Okay, number 10, failure to choose insurance wisely. This is really important because insurance, you can be insurance poor. You know, insurance is an extremely important too. But you have to 
buy it so that it fits you and it's the right product at the right price. And a lot of people make the mistake that it isn't. Now, I love this quote. Fun is like life insurance. The older you get, the more it costs. Actions to take. Consult a qualified, honest financial planner and insurance agent. Accurately assess your risks. And that's the other thing a lot of people don't know. Wait, how much life insurance do you really need? Do you know? How about the health insurance? What do you really need to have covered? Consider different approaches and different policies and assess the risk. If age and health is sensitive, do it, do it sooner than later. Because once you develop a health condition, insurance gets a lot more expensive. Self-insure where you can. Okay? Self-insure where you can. Then pass off the risk to the insurance company. If you're a business owner, coordinate business and personal insurance. Okay, these are the kinds of insurance that you're going to be looking at. There's a bunch of them. You have to decide which are most important for you and prioritize them. You know, that, if your biggest risks are disability and health and car insurance, um, you may not want to buy insurance on your computer. Failure to include long-term care in your plan. I'll tell you right now, this is, this is me. The best person to take care of the older you is the younger you. This is huge. Imagine you or your spouse becoming physically or mentally unable to care for yourselves. Envision what you would want to happen if such occurred. Where to live, the quality of care. Create a plan that includes the right balance between insurance and self-insurance. Here are the facts about long-term care. They're not pleasant. In 2018, the average monthly cost of a semi-private nursing home was $6,844 a month, and a private room was $7,698. This is the national average in 2018. Trust me, it's gone up since then. The average monthly cost of a room in an assisted living facility is $3,628 a month. Over 50% of people turning age 65 will need some time of long-term care services in their lifetime. 47% of men and 58% of women. The average stay in a home for men is 1.5 years, women 2.5. I'm just telling you the statistics. Okay. I hate bringing bad news, but sometimes I've got to to get to a solution. So the total cost range for men is somewhere between 43 and 139,000 that you're going to have to spend before you die. For women, it's between 109, say, and 100 and 231,000. This is based on the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the long-term government and Morningstar statistics. The actions to take, do your planning for LTC before retirement, ideally between 50 and 60 and no later than 70 because the cost of any insurance solutions are astronomical beyond 70. Okay, number 12, failure to include in unexpected expenses in um, things will go wrong. Remember the passage, there will be trouble. None of us gets through life without having problems. The prudent, this is from Proverbs 22, the prudent see danger and take refuge, but the simple keep going and pay the penalty. I think that's worth repeating. The prudent see the danger, and they take refuge. But the simple just keep on going, and end up paying the penalty. So the actions to take are identify what can go wrong. That can be job loss, health problems, car problems, house problems, stuff breaking, family with problems. 
right? How many have not ever had any of those go wrong? No hands. <laughs> Create an emergency fund. I, am, I recommend putting at least three months and preferably six months of your bills in an emergency fund in case you uh, lose your job or something else happens. Then specific risks and future inevitable costs. Those are the buckets. Buy the appropriate insurance. Now, 13 is failure to include fun in your budget. I love this. I actually had, I had a, some retirees in my office a few years ago. And as their financial planner and investment advisor, I had to say to them, please, I want you to go spend at least $6,000 and have some fun. They were, they were like this. They, weren't, they, they just didn't feel comfortable. They, 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 they were so afraid. Fear is one of the worst things because that can make you too conservative. They had enough money. I could figure it out. They could take six, eight thousand dollars and have no risk. It's not worth having life if you're not having a good time, at least some of the time, right? And there's an amazing number of people that just don't know how to have fun. I know that's a weird one for a financial planner to put in, but I, but I do. Okay. Life is meant to be fulfilling and enjoyable. Wealth is with misery is not wealth at all. The actions to take. Put recreation. I like to say it that way instead of just recreation. Recreation into your budget. Don't overdo it. Make sure it's balanced with your overall financial discipline. Recreation includes both active and restful activities. Working out, seeing a show, Vacation, lying on a beach. This is to recreate who you are. And it's valid to spend money doing that. I think it's sad when people are, are so scroogish <laughs> that they can't do that. Fourteen, failing to create an update to your state plan. Why is that important? And why is that a mistake to your retirement? Not necessarily a mistake to your retirement, but it could be a mistake for your spouse. Other people you're depending on. Ah, bad dad joke. Driving by the cemetery. Hey kids, people are just dying to get in there. If you don't make a will and a plan, the government will do it for you. Okay? Write down what you would want to have, have happen if you died. This sounds morbid. It's not. It's creative. It's part of our responsibility as human beings. Take some notes on yourself. And write it down. What would you like to see happen? Choose a knowledgeable and experienced attorney to, as Captain Picard said, make it so. Be careful in appointing your executor. Your executor needs to be able to do the job, both intellectually and physically and in terms of location. Include a letter of instruction. I love it. You know, today we talk about wills. They used to call it a last will and a testament. They seem to have dropped off the testament part. Is that right? This is your opportunity to get your last licks in. <laughs> say what you want to say. Give, them, give your folks a message. I like including the Testament. Write a letter of instruction. Write letters to all your kids and everything. Tell them how much you love them, and, but also what their responsibilities are. Fifteen, failure to pay off mortgages and other debt before retiring. Okay. The goal, as soon as you can in life, is to be debt-free. Debt-free is where you should be. Proverbs says the borrower is the slave of the lender. It can't get any more clear than that. The borrower is the slave of the lender. And I fear, quite frankly, for our country, because we have ignored biblical wisdom. The biblical wisdom from Leviticus says, you shall lend to many nations, you shall not borrow, 
And it was on that that Solomon built the richest kingdom, arguably, in history. We are violating that every day to an extent that's frightening. Don't do it personally. Actions to take. Tackle the highest interest rate first. Credit cards are slavery. I mean, you could be paying anywhere from 16 to 28% on some cards. You don't want to do that. If you can't manage the credit card and the credit card manages you, cut it up, don't use it anymore. You need to pay it off every month. You need to use it as a tool, not as an out. Tackle the highest interest rate first. Calculate extra principal payments to make on mortgages to pay off prior to retirement. It's interesting to that a 10 or 15% extra principal payment on a 30-year loan can cut some 30-year loans in as much as half the time to pay them off. Failure to examine the optimum time to begin collecting Social Security. That's really important as you get near a retirement. What's the optimum time for you? I was going to tell a joke to some young folks about Social Security, but then I thought, you know, they might not get it. <laughs> you got it? That one has to sink in. Uh, that's fine. <laughs> Consider it well before your retirement date. If you are healthy and don't need it right away, the benefits can increase 8% per year from the normal retirement age to age 70. At retirements, now we get to the at retirement. You're there. Here's the mistakes to avoid once you're there. Making the wrong choice about Social Security. This is when you, you have some, you know, Social Security is more complicated than it sounds like. And that's why you, you do need some counsel. You need to go online. Here's the actions to take. Research it. Go to the Social Security website. You can call them with questions. I've done that. It's interesting because they're more responsive than more, most government <laughs> agencies, and they're more responsive than telephone companies. How about this, go folks? You can call a telephone company up and they don't answer their phone. <laughs> Consult an expert. Know what your choices are and pick the one that fits you the best. 18, choosing the wrong retirement location. A lot of people don't think about this. Location, location, location. It's true when you're buying real estate. It's also true when you're retiring. You might also be retiring to a new location. So the actions to take are do some research. Consider the cost of living, property and school taxes, convenience and enjoyment, along with the effect on your relationships. Every once in a while, I think of going to the islands, or someplace where I could scuba dive and just escape from it all. Let me a little hard on my relationships. So, you got to weigh everything. 19, retiring too soon without a useful strategy, a usefulness strategy. I've always said I want to be useful and not just ornamental. My wife knows that I'll say that from time to time. So what do I need to do? I need to think. I need to use the brain God gave. I want to consider my talents and personality. Consider part-time work and the possibility of mentoring young folks. I go back to the Bible. I can't find the word retirement in the Bible. I prefer the word independence. The concept and the, and the word are not in the Bible. You're always supposed to be useful. And what's interesting is people that actually really retire and do nothing, they die sooner. That's a statistical fact. So be useful, folks. You can do so many things. My dad, when he retired, he was in the Coast Guard Auxiliary with, with his other old guys rescuing the teenagers that had, that had you know, dumped their boat on the reef and didn't know what to do. 
Uh, he was doing charity work. He was on a, a, a government uh, uh, called SCORE. It was a, it was a government agency uh, that, that where retired businessmen counsel other businessmen. Really cool stuff out there. A lot of people don't even know about it. Consider entrepreneurial activity. If you can afford it, hey, this is your chance, you know, to... Make an investment. If you if, if if you can live off of everything else, you got an extra fifty hundred thousand dollars, and you've got a great business idea, and you can partner up with somebody. Go for it. I think it was uh, Ray Kroc of McDonald's. I mean, he what did he he found at McDonald's. I think when he was like seventy or something like mm -hmm. that. Um, you're never too old to be productive and creative. Consider church and charity volunteer work. There's so much need in this world. And if you've got it, give it. So, uh, let's see. Being late to sign up for Medicare, <laughs> that, can, that can have some problems associated with it. You always want to make sure you're within the time frames. And uh, I don't know how this got off uh, the uh, timing. Is that what they are talking about when they say the late great? <laughs> so what you want to do is it, Medicare enrollment begins three months before your 65th birthday and continues for seven months. And if you're currently receiving Social Security benefits, you don't need to do anything because you're already registered with the government. It's really important to be registered. Okay? You need to know you exist. Supposedly they already know you exist, but Hey, different departments, and you know, just make sure you do it right. Uh, and at the same time, look for Medicare supplement insurance and consult your financial planning insurance experts. 21, failure to review and choose your health and other insurance wisely. This is very important because you've got Medicare Part A, Part B, you've got supplement. You know, Medicare A and B don't cover dental, they don't cover this. You sort of need to wade through it. Um, what do hospital gowns and insurance policies have in common? You're never covered as much as you think you are. Actions to take. Consult your independent insurance agent. Compare various plans, Part A and Part B, and supplemental insurance. Note that Part A and B do not cover long-term care, most dental care, vision, hearing aids, and more. Okay, now we get to post-retirement. What's your in retirement? There are seven mistakes you can make there. Keeping too many cars and overly expensive cars. Just buy transportation, folks. You know, when, when, when you're young and dumb, you want status. When you're wise, you realize, I just want to get from point A to point B, and I don't care what it looks like. Oh, I want to die peacefully in my sleep like my grandfather, not screaming and yelling like the passengers in his car. <laughs> I don't know who said it, but it's funny. Actions to take. Buy only what you actually need. Buy used cars. Buy transportation, not status. Oh, the used car thing is really good. Because I... Most of in my life now, I've bought used cars. I got, I got wise to that. I let somebody else depreciate it for a couple of years. Okay? I buy it for half price and get 60 or 70% of the life out of the car. Ooh, not a bad idea. Pay cash, do not finance. Oh, another tr thing about cars. If you're paying cash, whatever they're asking for it, and they're saying, hey, no, no interest, BS. They build it into the price of the car. If you have cash and they're asking for eighteen thousand in the car, I bet you can buy it for cash for fourteen. Sorry, car dealers, but that's just the facts. You 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 can do this, okay? So pay cash with your cars. Twenty three. Keeping too much house and stuff. Guilty. My wife and I are talking about it right now. Got too much stuff. Yes. You know, and then you gotta store it, and you think the kids might want it. The kids won't want it now, but she's saying to me, if they don't want it now, sell it, throw it, do something with it, because it's only a cost. Often removing is improving. 
actions to take, downsize to a level of practicality and comfort in retirement. No mortgage. Sell, give away, or throw out what you don't need. Now this brings us to 24. Overspending your budget and taking too much from investments. I spent a lot of money on focus training. Maybe I just should have paid attention. Use computer programs or spreadsheets to track your spending. I think it's very important to write it down, have a record of what you do, and review it regularly to see what you've done. Most people don't like to do this. It's not comfortable because when I see what I've done, I go, oops, shouldn't have done that. Ah, this is what I always told my kids. No is a complete sentence. And sometimes we have to use it on ourselves. The ideal is to take from investments annually is 3% and the maximum is 5%. Why is that? If you made nothing in investments at 3%, you're still going to last over three years, over your life expectancy, and you won't outspend your money. 5% starts to pull it in a little bit more, but you can still do it as long as you have a positive return. Investing too conservatively is number 25. Yes, you can be too conservative. How many millionaires do you know who have become wealthy by investing in savings accounts? I rest my case, Robert Allen. Actions to take. Remember inflation. You have to make a real return above inflation to make any progress at all. So if inflation right now is around 2%, that's, that's the government statistics, but your own inflation may be higher, by the way. You have to calculate your own inflation. Because the government statistics sometimes are cooked. But let's say it's 2%. Well, guess what? It's pretty hard to make more than that in a savings account, isn't it? You're moving in reverse, especially after taxes. You will need some equity, some ownership, some intrinsic value that can grow faster inflation. That's why even a retiree who is conservative needs to own some stocks, some real estate, something real that's going to make a return above inflation. Work with your investment professional to create a portfolio that fits you. If inflation is 2% and you take out 3, your total return must be at least 5. If inflation is 3 and you take out 4, your total return must be at least 7. Bond CDs, fixed rate annuities will not make 5%, much less 7. And this is the difficult thing in organizing investments. So, investing too aggressively is a problem. Invest for the long haul. Don't get too greedy and don't get too scared. Actions to take. Measure your risk. Can you weather a 40% portfolio decline, 20%? You have to ask those questions. Work closely with your investment professional to design the right mix of investments. 27, we're almost there. Failure to plan for almost inevitable health problems and the need for long-term care. This is the biggie for retirees, for retirees. This is the biggie. I gave you the statistics earlier, and I know it's a repeat, but this is the single biggest financial mistake that people can make. Review that mistake 11. Make a plan and act on it. And the last one is failure to plan for later life housing, which is really closely connected to number 27. The way it goes today, and what I recommend to folks before they have to, is that they consider the modern retirement communities, where I call it buying into the club. You actually sell your house, you buy the apartment, now you're guaranteed life, care for life, you've got a monthly benefit. Some of these places, even if, if things went downhill, they're well endowed, some of them, the really good ones. And they've never kicked anybody out, even if there's been a financial crash. But you have a monthly maintenance fee, you've got meals, but then, and this is the way it was for my parents, you have care that is mapped out from being independent to being on your deathbed and moving back up the ladder and going this way. And both of my parents had to do this a couple times. And had we not planned for that, I don't know what I would have done. I don't know what I would have done. Um, and any 
anybody that's, that's doing care giving, you know, I, I salute Lou and, and some of the other folks that I know. It is hard. It's not easy. And the best thing we can do is plan so that that is a lessened risk. You can't eliminate it. There's nothing pleasant about getting old, tired, sick, and eventually dying. That's not a fun thing, but it's reality. It's reality. So, visit retirement communities that have the continuum of health care services. Choose one that you can afford and would move, you would move to if necessary or because it is a good fit for you. Put any plans, excuse me for the misspelling, <laughs> agreements, deposits into play before you need it. And this is your bonus. Mistake. Again, I go back to not enjoying your life. We need to enjoy life. It shouldn't be a prison. It shouldn't be a downer. Yes, we're going to have those moments. But we're meant to enjoy life. And that's it. I'm going to open it up to any questions now. Um, yeah, I think I did that in just a little over 45 minutes. My goal. Yes. <clears throat> Number 14, estate planning. Yes. You referenced uh, perhaps including uh, letters, yes. estimates. Yes. Understand that in general, these are what are called, in the law is transitory in nature, which means hopeful. Hopeful, okay. Right. Oh, I like that. Generally not enforceable. Yes. So. We yes. For. You're just you're just giving a message. It's not yes. it's not the legal side of that. Right. Yes. Probably not enforceable. But yeah. You're you're, you're telling your kids, I'd like it if you right. did this. <laughs> but the kids can say, No, sorry. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. But it's your last chance to at least give a message. Yes. Thank thank you for for making that clear. Any other questions, comments? Yes. invest as soon as you can. I remember when our kids were little and, and what was interesting was is we started to put away, you know, like $50 here and $50 there. And my parents did the same thing. And it was amazing if you start when a child is born and you start putting $50 a month away or whatever into a mutual fund and it grows at an average of 6, 7%, 8% a year. It's amazing what happens in 18 years. Um, so the sooner is the better. It's hard. It's very hard. Because there's always something that comes in ahead of that. And that's why most people don't do it. You know, and and it sympathies, I mean, it wasn't like we could save a lot. But we did where we could. And then there were some months we couldn't because there was an emergency or something else would happen. But I know that you'll be better off to the extent that you do it than if you don't do it at all. I think that's that's the important message for young people. And and the earlier you start, the better. Good question. Anything else? We thank you for coming. Thank you very much. We have some, some hors d'oeuvres and snacks and everything in the back, so thank you very much. And, uh, uh, we hope... Uh, I hope you do very, very well in the future. Okay, thank you.